Welcome to Lecture 9, Couples and Equivalent Force Systems. In this lecture, we'll be discussing the moment of a couple and simplification of a force and couple system. Two forces that have the same magnitude, parallel lines of action, and opposite sense form what is known as a couple. The moment produced by a couple is known as a couple moment. Let's look at the couple moment produced by the couple shown in the figure about an arbitrary point O. Now we can express that moment as the moment of F about point O plus the moment of minus F about point O with the moment of F about point O being the cross product of a position vector from O to the line of action of F and F and the cross product of a position vector from O to the line of action of negative F and negative F. Now the distributive uh, property applies to uh, cross products, so we can write this equation. And then remembering back to, I believe, the second lecture, r sub b minus r sub a is equivalent to r. Now what this means is, is that the our couple moment m is dependent only on R, the position vector between the two forces that make up the couple. And the couple moment is known as a free vector in that it can act at any point on the body without, with, uh, without the external effect uh, changing. So that's probably not intuitive, and we're going to see that some more, but you, you need to think about um, uh, what a free vector is and uh, become uh, comfortable with it. Let's look at the scalar formulation of a couple moment. The magnitude is given by this equation, where this should look familiar. It's just the magnitude of one of the forces times the perpendicular distance between the two forces in the couple. And the direction and sense of the resulting couple moment are going to be determined by the right hand rule. So in other words, you can see that these forces are trying to create like a, a counterclockwise motion. And so if we wrap our fingers in that direction, then the resulting moment vector vector is going to be uh, in the direction of our thumb. And it will always act perpendicular to the plane containing the forces. Now for a vector formulation of the couple moment, we two slides ago, we established that the moment of a couple in vector is R cross F at, with R being any position vector from one of the forces, line of, the line of action of one of the forces to the line of action of the other force. And you can uh, visualize or apply this by imagining you are taking the moment about a point A or the moments about a point A that lies on the line of action of one of the forces. And you see that the force that acts through A, in other words, the A is on the line of action of the force, so there's no perpendicular distance there. There's no R between the line of action and the force and A. 
So that moment is going to be zero, but the other moment is going to be uh, the position vector crossed into the other force. So we just end up back with M equals R cross F. Couples are said to be equivalent when their moments, their couple moments, have the same magnitude and direction. So if you look at the, the two pictures here, you can see that uh, a 30 Newton couple uh, with a distance of 0 0.4 meters between the lines of actions of the uh, forces produces the same couple moment as a 40 Newton couple with uh, a distance of 0 0.3 meters between their lines of action. So these two couples are said to be equivalent. Couple moments are vectors, just like the forces and displacements we've been working with so far in the course. So the rules of vector algebra apply to them. Consider uh, the figure here where we have uh, a couple moment M1 and couple moment M2. As we said earlier, couple moments are free vectors. They can act anywhere uh, on, on the body. And since they are free vectors, we can join their tails at any point to find uh, uh, to let us find the resultant couple moment. So these two couple moments here, they're just vectors, but they're free vectors. So we can join them tail to tail at some arbitrary point and then use our vector uh, algebra to find their resultant. Now again, this, this idea of free vectors is probably not intuitive and you, you know, uh, it's something you're going to have to think through and um, learn to uh, use. So the resultant couple moment and vector is equal to couple moment one plus couple moment two. Now let's look at the simplification of a force and couple system. So when we have a number of forces and couple moments acting on a body, many times it's going to be easier to understand the overall effect of those forces and moments on the body if we can create an equivalent system that contains only a single resultant force and a single resultant couple moment. And this new system is, is said to be equivalent to the original system if it has the same external effect, if, if that, that single resultant force and single resultant moment have the same external effect as the original system of forces and moments. So in the figure here, this is our original system, and this could have any number of forces and moments acting on it. And we're trying to create an equivalent system to simplify things, and that equivalent system is only going to contain a single resultant force and a single resultant couple moment. And we can say that it is equivalent if it has uh, this this new system is equivalent to the original one if it has the same external effect on the body. And what we mean by that in statics is that um, that the reactive forces that are holding that body still, in other words, are the body uh, the, the, our bodies in statics aren't moving, they're not translating or rotating. they're they're being held still. So if the reactive forces um, in the equivalent system are identical to the reactive forces 
in the original system, then uh, we have created an, an equivalent system. So in the next few slides, we'll uh, uh, develop how we can um, go about creating uh, the so-called equivalent system. So let's start by looking at moving a force on its line of action. So if you look at the first figure here, we have somebody holding a pole, a short piece of pole, and there's a force uh, being uh, applied at the right end of the pole at point A, and the pole's being held at uh, point B. And if we move the force, the application of the force from A to B uh, along the line of action of the force, the external effect uh, is not going to be changed. And in, in this case, it's that the, the reaction uh, 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 where the person is gripping the pole. So in other words, when we move this force down the line of action to here, the person holding the pole isn't going to notice any difference. It's going to be, it's going to feel the same. And we know this because we talked about the, the uh, principle of transmissibility and the fact that a force vector is a sliding vector that it can be applied at any point along its line of action. Okay, so this is a, an example of that uh, concept that we, we touched on briefly uh, earlier in the course. Now let's look at the simplification of a force and couple system. This time we will apply a vertical downward force at the end of the of the pipe and now the external effect at the grip at B is going to be both a downward force and you're going to feel a moment trying to rotate the pipe uh, in a clockwise uh, manner. So if we move the force now off its line of action, that moment will disappear the closer the force gets to be. In other words, as D decreases and finally goes to zero, then uh, the external effect would just feel like there's a force, just the force at B with no moment. That's not the same external effect as we started with. So moving the uh, F off its line of action without doing something to um, account for that moment uh, uh, will not give us an equivalent system. So when we do move a force off its line of action, we need to create an additional couple moment in order to keep the external effect uh, the same. So imagine that we we move the force down here to the grip. External effect now feels different, but we add in this couple moment. I'm sorry, this couple, which produces a couple moment, and look at the overall net effect of the forces. These two cancel each other out from the force resultant perspective, but they do create a moment about uh, the grip, which will be equal to FD. So the equivalent system between to, for the first figure is the third figure where when I move that force down the pipe a distance of D I have to add a couple moment of magnitude F times D and that will 
uh, ensure I have the same external effects and as the as as I started with, and uh, it's now considered uh, an equivalent system. So back to the big picture. So if I have a body with multiple forces and couple moments acting on it, and I want to uh, create an equivalent system that consists of one resultant force and one resultant couple moment acting on the body, I can move the forces to some arbitrary point that I've, you know, that I pick as long as I move their associated couple moments with them to that point. So I can move F1 to O as long as I take along its couple moment, which is just going to be R cross F as shown down here. Okay, there's F1 that's there's F1 that's been moved to O, and I can move F2 to O as long as I take along its couple moment uh, M2, which is R2 cross F2, and I can do this for any number of forces as long as I is if they're if they do not if their line of action does not pass through O, I can do it as long as I take along their couple moment uh, about point O with each force as I move it to O. And then my free moments, which I could have, you know, however many I have, we already established we can move those anywhere we want. So that gets moved to O. And now I can sum my forces vec vectorally and sum my moments vectorally and end up with this equivalent system that has what we call a resultant, one resultant force couple moment pair. And that's what we're trying to get to. So let's sum this up for the general case. So to create an equivalent system, to simplify a force and couple system by creating an equivalent system, with a single resultant force and a single resultant couple moment, I sum all the forces vectorally. This is this is all vector. And then for the to find the resultant force, and then to find the resultant moment, I sum all of the couple moments that resulted from the movement of each of the individual forces to the point, in this, this case we'll call it O, I sum all those and I add that to the sum of all the free moments. And that produces the resultant moment. Now for the 2D case where we work scalar, um, we could uh, sum all of the uh, X components of the forces, uh, all the Y components of the forces, and sum all of the couple moments produced by moving those uh, X components and Y components to O, and then I have to add that to the sum of the, uh, the free moments on the body.